Hello, denizens of the internet. Welcome to my channel. Now, for frequent visitors to my channel, you know that I cover a variety of topics and some of my favorite things to cover are Apple computers, Hackintoshes, but the other thing that I really like covering is photography and a lot of you know me for my, for my Panasonic uh, Micro Four Thirds passion. But today, I'm really thrilled to be talking to a good old friend of mine who is one of the world's most renowned and still living art photographers, Yuri Deutsch. So hello, Yuri. Thank you. Uh, and, and I pitched Yuri an idea that I called, is Helmut Newton dead? Now, those of you who know who Helmut Newton is, of course he's dead in our very puritanical political correctness that seems to uh, pervade everything that we're doing. Would Helmut Newton style provocative pictures still be allowed to be shot today, consumed today, without a whole bunch of people getting on social media complaining about it. And Yuri is also known for shooting some very provocative pictures, beautiful pictures. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about. And let's start off by, first of all, uh, letting Yuri introduce himself. Well, I'm a Canadian Slovak photographer. Uh, who came to Canada in 1968 after the Russian invasion and started new life. It was a, quite an experience for me and I didn't know what to do with myself when I came to Canada and on recommendation of a friend of mine, I uh, went to Ryerson just to see what's going on. I was caught by the dean of photography who I was afraid he's going to call police on me <laughs> but surprisingly he didn't he was interested about political situation in Czechoslovakia I told him what I knew and bingo I was admitted to Ryerson no portfolio no prior knowledge of photography not even owning a camera wow so this is one of my many miraculous coincidences of my life. And out of that, you became a world-renowned photographer. I became a photographer. World-renowned is somebody else who have to decide. I think you're being very modest. We're going to cover four areas, which, uh, uh, which I think is, is really emblematic of the situation that we're in. And I'm, I'm fascinated by the idea that we were able to do things long time ago that we can't do it, or you know, we can still do it, but is maybe more controversial right now. And, and again, we are living in this new puritanical world, which I found find quite ironic. There's four topics that I want to cover today with Yuri. Newton as a category, Newton specifically, his life as a photographer, fashion nudes in general, or we could call it fashion provocative in general, because sometimes you don't have to be shooting nudes to be provocative. The idea can really bug people, <laughs> certain people. And uh, then Yuri, about your career. I want to finish off with your fashion background and can to I the add world something? of photography. Yeah. Sure, of course. On your premise at the beginning about today left getting into this puritanical, it's so interesting because during my childhood in communist Czechoslovakia, which was ultimate left establishment, Puritanism was very much part of the culture and we were not allowed to do certain things and nude photography would be abhorred by the authority and what was the first thing when communism collapsed was outpour of pornography in all eastern <laughs> countries, every country, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Every, when you came there after the communism collapse, all magazines were showing pornography. Not even nude stuff, just outright pornography. Because when you push so much right. people on that puritanical, there's somewhere else that energy has to get out. But my, my brief summary of why we're doing it is I think we're bored. We have not had a world war in such a long time that we're now occupying ourselves with useless minutiae and stupid shit. That's, that's really my, why we're, we've returned to this nonsense. Anyway, so let's get into Helmut Newton as a category uh, of controversial photography. 
Well, when Helmut came on the scene, 70s, 80s, uh, it was refreshing, at least for me, his photography, because it sort of, it brought fantasy, which was missing. Mm. American photography, Penn and Avedon, as beautiful as it is, but it's predictable. Helmut Newton was unpredictable, and his companion at France, Guy Bourdin, was even more so. So that brings certain electricity, at least to me. I would say, from my perspective, the one thing that ties Bourdin, you, and Newton together is a sense of humor. And there was 60s, that we have to okay. remember that 60s broke so many taboos. So somehow there is this new creative mm. energy, new creative excitement. And I came to Canada end of 60s, so it was the right time. So we were all excited, there was something new, there was a, everybody was talking about Toronto being the next New York. Uh, we had this big hope of total creative freedom. And what's happening today is actually that the whole thing is yeah. sort of falling down. Um, I must tell you, a certain thought came to my mind sure. when you were talking about that, yes, there's certain self-censorship on all of us right now. And some of them is actually justifiable. And I must say that something I would not do today, which I did mm. then, uh, is it just, no, it's certain respect. I learn a lot about respect to certain things, and I would respect them more than I did before. Mm. But I don't like for my creativity to be um, dictated by some kind of rules, because I lived through that, and I just didn't come here to get another rules, or too much, uh, too much censorship would be stifling. Female nudes have been around uh, a part of art history for centuries. I is it gone? It's not gone, but it's curb hmm. in some way. Uh, I bet you that fashion magazine, well, the mainstream, would be not daring to do certain things which we dare to do in the 70s. So it's tamed down. There are avant-garde magazines who actually go opposite direction because they can. So it's not sure. totally cut. And, and certain people confuse art nude with pornography. Absolutely. And that's a challenge. That's the kind of thing. It will always be there. If they, somebody, somebody wants to put you down, they will say you're a pornographer. And one of the questions that I think people want answered is, is nude photography misogynist? And I would say exact opposite. Mm. It's admitted, the photographers who were good at it were huge admirers of women and had a huge respect for them. And I have to say I'm one of them who respect models enormously and uh, uh, if they wanted photograph with me, they knew what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. And that was premise of the whole shoot. Well, obviously the models that came to you were not coming against their will. No. And speaking about Helmut Newton, I knew a little bit, I read his biography, and I know he was, actually, he was married to June Newton, and it was an extremely successful marriage. And there was, no, there are photographers who are womanizers, that's they game. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as it's voluntary, as it's mutual. But Helmut Newton actually was very loyal to his wife. It doesn't give him cover. Exactly. But, but I also think, my impression is that this uh, fantasy that Helmut Newton and Guy Bourdin and yourself have created is of equal interest to both men and women. Absolutely. And I would like to say one thing, that fantasy comes from each of our background. Helmut Newton came from pre-war Germany. He was assistant in a photo studio. There was a, there was a Weimar Republic. There was a lots of lots of creative energy going on at that time. And then World War II came and everything just collapsed. Mm -hmm. and, but that energy was still in him. I came from a repressive system of communism where we actually, there was a pornography on the side or underground 
even as a kid, somebody would bring picture of naked woman. <laughs> and we were highly excited about it. So that kind of repression, and you come to the freedom, and then you just, you're free now. You can do whatever you want. So you express yourself in a different form than somebody who was here. So what's the dividing line between art, nude, and pornography? Oh, there was some clever line I heard in past. Uh, <laughs> and you don't have it ready? <laughs> Let's talk about Newton specifically. You've, you've read about him and his I read history. about him so, and I met him. I met him in Bratislava. He came to open his exhibition and he went to give a speech at university and I, I came because I was part of the in, the in group. And he was welcome in Czechoslovakia, post-communist Czechoslovakia. Right. That's very important. As a rock star. I'm not surprised. Absolute rock star. And he actually, I think he, he acted like one too. He had a scarf, just the way he walked. Right. That tells you a lot. Now, he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't have that kind of reception here. I can guarantee you that. But the question is, is he dead today? That's the question. Could he do what he did back then, today? I would say no, he couldn't. He wouldn't be allowed? Uh, not that. People like Helmut Newton, myself, you make money from commercial mm. photography, which means working for a magazine is one thing, but you really make your salary comes from advertising for the major companies. And those companies would not allow that kind of photography today because they would be afraid they would lose because there would be controversy and no company likes controversy. Well, we've moved into another area where you're going to be judged on your past work. So let's say someone wants to hire Helmut Newton and they see good portraits of stars, but then they find online his picture of the woman on all fours in bed with the saddle on her back with her boobs kind of hanging down and then suddenly they're going to go cancel him. I think so too. That's the problem is that it's... that's the biggest issue is that oh my god I don't like that work that you did in the past I'm not going to hire you now. And he's lucky that he's dead. <laughs> we will be too Yuri. <laughs> I know. Will we be lucky that we're dead? <laughs> no no he's lucky he's dead because his work is now in a canon of photography. If he was alive and there would be controversy, he may be, and cancel culture can actually right. kick him out from the canon. Uh, you can be canceled for anything. Exactly. A previous statement, uh, your previous work. You know, it happened to me once, and this picture actually is in my book. When model came to studio, we had arrangement, we are shooting nudes, she knew what we're doing, we start shooting, and in last minute, she says, I changed my mind. And I sort of put a time aside, and I said, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. So you know what? If you don't want to do it, fine. So I, we do something. So I just wrapped her, so it looks like just head coming from the... So I took situation and just changed it, but I didn't throw her out of the studio. I wasn't upset. She didn't want to do it, she didn't want to do it. And you respect her, respected Absolutely. her wishes. Absolutely, well, but that's... I respected my time. So I used my time and happened to be the picture came very well. Well, sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. Exactly, uh, and that's what happened to yeah, me. Yeah, you're a creative person. Sometimes working within a cul or a, a, a challenge challenges you to come up with something that you would never have come up with. And coming back to this misogyny, I know that many photographers would be so upset, they would be throwing temper, and maybe because they just don't like the woman, and he, she just did something hmm. in contrary to his, to his position of power. One well, more it, power to you. I, mean, it, I think that's a great story. It's all about personality and how you take the challenge. Hey, and this is the picture. You just happen to have it handy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a fantastic picture. Like I said, this is a creative process and uh, this, this new wokeism or whatever it's called, it's just stifled the, the creativity. We'll finish off with uh, what you're doing now. Would you go back to doing nudes? 
Actually, you know, I still do them. Okay. Uh, nobody stopped me, and I don't. I'm not really part of mainstream, so I can do whatever I want. Um, so yeah, I stopped doing sort of commercial photography in 20, in 2000, around 2000, because everything changed dramatically. Photoshop came on the scene, and there was less and less need for a creative advertising photography. Um, and by again another milestone experience I had during the funeral of my dad that I came across something which I knew about but I really didn't understand fully and it was all about the Holocaust and I started photographing uh, people who survived Holocaust just because I met this lady who told me that that's what she's doing and I offered her a lift. So it was just pure coincidence. And uh, I started working on this and then five years later I met a producer from England who was interested to do a movie about it. So we started making movie and uh, the movie expanded from short documentary into full-fledged film. And from that we created a project called Last Folio which been shown, I think, in about 30 countries around the world and numerous, numerous venue, including National Museum of some country like Brazil, Republic of Georgia, Slovakia, and then it was in United Nations, European Parliament. So it's, you get to another world, but same time, I would still do whatever I want to do. So I come back to Toronto, I go to some exhibition, I meet some model, she wants to shoot nudes, we do it. Because she knows your reputation. And she knows the reputation yeah. and for me, I need to do something different. I, I cannot just do this serious photography which I did in Europe. When I was in Rome, we had exhibition in, uh, emb uh, not embassy, but uh, library, the uh, main library of Italy, and the chief librarian of Italy asked me, Yuri, what was the what was the impetus for you to do all these projects? And I said, well, it was coincidence. And then he said, there's not such a thing like coincidence. I said, what do you mean? Like this happened to me, this happened to me, and that's how the project started. In Italy, we say a tutto scritto. It's all written. Mm -hmm. Yuri, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, wonderful uh, interview. I really appreciate you, you doing it. Hopefully, maybe you'll spearhead the next revolution against this Puritanism. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Till next time, denizens, be seeing you. Boom.